Hello, hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Volvo Christian, and welcome to the smart hashtag one. Stupid ass name, but it's kind of funky looking exterior. I kind of like it, and I kind of don't. Uh, I'm not sure what to think about the exterior, but either way, we have the smart hashtag one in front of us. But why do we have the smart tag hashtag one here? Well, time after time in my head and also in my previous EX30 videos, I've been slamming the EX30 and claiming that the smart hashtag one are superior. Especially when you think about the price point. A fully decked out EX30 twin performance ultra peaks at 520,000. If you go for the smart hashtag one, with the Brabus kit and, and every every option, then you take at 540,000. So they're priced pretty darn close. And I think, or my claim was, or my thought was that this is superior in terms of interior qualities and everything you touch and feel. So in this video, we're gonna do a little exterior, interior presentation. And I will also try to be as objective as I can, but I will definitely point out some elements that we don't get in Volvo's EX30. So I hope you will enjoy this video. And just to make it absolutely clear, this is not a press car from Mercedes or Smart or anything. This is a regular demo car, and I'm borrowing this as a customer or potential customer, because I'm considering cha changing out my XC40 next summer or th this summer either for uh, EX30 cross country, or maybe I should try something completely different, such as the smart hashtag one. So that's why I have it here today. I'm borrowing, borrowing it as a potential customer, just to make that completely clear. But let's take a look at the exterior design. So what do you think about the exterior design? It's <laughs> definitely funky, especially this ending here. It's funky. I'm not sure if I like it. I prefer the EX30 exterior, but it's kind of cool in this paint. If you go for the red, uh, no, the black and the red roof, I have a strong Kia Soul vibe going on. Not in a good way, but I've seen a couple of other color combinations and it kind of reminds me of the movie Italian Job with the three minis with the, with the, let me see if I can do it on the top of my head uh, Charlie's Theron, Jason Statham and Mark Wahlberg each hammering about uh, with their own mini maybe they should make a new Italian Job the, the German Job or the Chinese Job and they'll be just rocking three minis Charlie's Theron going white maybe Jason Statham are going blue and Mark Wahlberg are going white, I'm not sure, let's see. But I kind of got this Italian job going on. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, but the, this ex exterior is on the funky side. Also the light signature, everything with the exterior are, uh, are funky. But there's one thing, or there's several things, but there's one thing that's cool uh, when, we when we are here at the exterior. Try to do this in your EX30, yeah? Ain't no. Oh, I'm so pissed that the smart people can do this and Volvo's EX30 doesn't have a kick sensor. And just to push my buttons even further, here is the key tag for the smart hashtag one. 
three buttons lock unlock and the centerpiece maybe you should hold it yeah ah. so already from the start we are really taking off the ex30 uh, buttons that things you can't get with Volvo's ex30 kick sensor button with a, lot, a key tag with buttons yeah we're not off to a good start regarding the ex30 but uh, the beauty lays within and that is definitely the case with the smart hashtag one so let's jump inside so jumping inside a smart hashtag one and instantly it feels and looks at a much higher level than Volvo's ex30 we also have some elements that you're not gonna find in Volvo's version such as the curtain and while that is moving backwards we can open up this uh, sun cover with the integrated mirror and also I'm not sure if you can see this we also have a little light going on light yeah so overall it looks just better individual window switches in all doors and this stupid ass fox can also adjust the windows it's kind of cranky so I'm not gonna try it but it can adjust the windows it can turn on and off the head-up display it can does car functions that the ex30 can't do but now it's sleeping is dumbass fox the graphics are just really really bad with this fox thing even in sports mode this thing are just <gasps> yawning and just putting itself down to sleep in sports mode I want it to be more active <laughs> dumbass fox but either way sunglass holder even my big big sunglasses can fit in here it's a little clever packaging see ideally you should have a slightly smaller kit but my other ones are in the XC40 but good space we have a little, uh, not gonna call it a phone charger because this thing aren't actually, and grab some pictures in overlay. This isn't a phone charger per se, it's a phone heater. I've had it here on several hours now when I took the range test. My battery was 39%, I'm now down to 17%. The only thing it did was to keep the percentage and also heat it up. So I, this, this is a phone heater, but I like that it's. Uh, uh, a cover over it so you don't get disturbed while you're driving with all the uh, notifications we have a huge storage room storage room you can put my so you can see how how deep it is and this is actually cooled you can cool down we have some uh, seagull seagulls or something uh, wildlife bird life but much storage space also under here the steering wheel are actually slightly thicker than Volvo's EX30 and I find this to be much better if you go for the Brabus version you will also get like Alcantara on the sides but the steering wheel oh the absolute best thing with the whole smart hashtag one oh the steering wheel buttons just turn off the light no, sound so you don't get disturbed by this uh, because there's physical buttons also just want to check I'm waiting for a quiz. Uh, just gonna tell him to come down here because we're gonna make a video with a comparison uh, EX30 versus, versus Smart Hashtag One. But it is physical buttons, buttons, and it's so much better than the capacitive shit that Volvo are implementing, and also the adaptive cruise. <coughs> adaptive cruise control when you press once you go one increment in like 80 to 81 to 82 one push if you hold it you go five it's to completely opposite on volvo you hold it for one and you push it for five but it's so slow and laggy in volvo's ex30 that if you hold it and you want to go like one it just runs like two or three uh, so it's hard to do one but here this is the absolute best physical buttons so easy easy to navigate we also have a driver display and we also have a head-up display though there's so much elements here 
that I really, really appreciate. Uh, um, that's com definitely better than Volvo's EX30. It's actually quite hard to, that that there's so many elements here, and that you can't find it in Volvo's EX30 that is priced approximately at the same price, such as leather seats. But yeah, this that was the front cabin. Let's jump quickly in the back. Because we got even more goodies with the smart hashtag one. You can already see I got an armrest. The seating position are really, really good. And I got a little latch here to pull in. So I can, let's see if I can pull it all the way up. Wow, you can sit like this. Because you can sit like this. This is the EX30 style. But I can just recline the backrest. How awesome isn't that? Uh, you can sit like this, but can you hear this? You can recline the seat. You get a really good position here. And if this wasn't enough, if you want more space for luggage, you can push the entire seat. This is like 10 centimeters, probably. Yeah, now I'm really close, but you can prioritize. Do you want luggage space, passenger space, or like a little bit of both? Why the heck aren't this available? What the? So much better than Volvo's EX30. Come on. I can't understand that this is, this is acceptable. This is so much better than Volvo's version. The only thing I can complain about, I forgot to mention it in the front, because when you have been driving and you want to get out, you have to do it two times, because at the first push, you're just opening the door handles on the outside, and then you have to do one more to get out, out of the car. Stupid ass, but <sighs> grab handles. Jacket hook, much better to have it here than on the column actually, but I don't know, huge thumbs up to the smart hashtag one interior. So it's time to wrap up my video. This was just going to be a short video, just a little teaser on what we got with the smart hashtag one versus EX30. Now I'm meeting up with Chris with his uh, vapor gray EX30 press car, but I've driven today like 300 kilometers, and yesterday I drove like 200 kilometers, so I got like 500 kilometers uh, ish. Yesterday evening, I compiled a list with some good and some bad things on the smart hashtag one. And I'm not going to talk too much about everything. I'm just going to put the list out, and if you have some questions, just ask me, and I will. We will take the discussion in the comment section. Just, just my top of the head uh, good things that I appreciate with the smart hashtag one. We're gonna start with the head-up display and driver display. Thumbs up, huge, huge benefit with this car versus EX30. Window switches, separate window switches in all four doors. Yeah, much, much better than this capacitive shit. I like that the screen are horizontal, better for video uh, if you are stopping at, um, at a charging destination, you want to look at uh, YouTube or uh, the map navigation. I like it horizontally. Adjustable second row, <laughs> really, really great. Key tag with physical buttons. Yes, kick sensor on the luggage door. Steering wheel buttons, battery preconditioning, and also the rear armrest. These are just some of my really good things with smart hashtag one. And then we come to the bad things. What I don't like are the exterior design. I'm not sure, even if it's kind of cool, it's kind of maybe too funky. I just want to close my eyes and then get to the car and then jump in. But uh, it is what it is. And then we come to the real bad thing. That is the infotainment. It's actually really, really clumsy. And it's just a pain in the ass. I can't understand how the EX30 can be so good and the smart hashtag one can be so poor. This is definitely the worst part and honestly it's almost a deal breaker because it's really really bad and that's stupid as fox this voice command is shit definitely shit it, it can't find a charging destination i had i tried like 550 times find that avenue charger just rubbish you can't find anything and you ask them can you tell me a joke or something? Just do something and just, uh, I can't help you, I can't help you. And just, 
<gasps> falling to sleep. Dumbass fucks. Infotainment? Shit. Small icons on the battery percentage in the driver display. Really, really small. Uh, so that, that I don't like. The door handles. Yeah. I'm not sure if I, I'm feeling this, this thing. Uh, but it was definitely on the inside when I think about it. <laughs> door handles. This, you have to double, double tap it uh, when you are stopping and just want to get out. One press and then this thing opens up and then one more press to get out. I'm not sure why, because the window doesn't go down. So annoying to get in and out of the car. And the last thing, brake pedal. I find it to be slightly on the jerky side, especially in low speed. And when you're driving, it's like, oh, brakes and then releases. And it's not as smooth as I would like. So that was the good and the bad. But overall, it's a really, really awesome car. I can't understand why they fuck it up with, like this, the, the worst thing here are the infotainment. I'm not bothered by this uh, driver alert because I have the speed right in front of me and the head-up -up, head display are really, really good. So I haven't got, gotten this uh, message to stay focused because uh, you get everything in front of you. These door handles are living their own life. But if we compare it to Volvo's EX30, that is really, really good to drive, but it has some flaws in the infotainment and minimalistic in the one screen layout. Here, everything appears to be perfect, but then they, they just mess it up with the infotainment. God damn, so annoying. But the driving, quite pleasant. It's on, it's more sporty setup than Volvo's EX30. It's on the firmer side, firmer suspension but this handles better in corners and also on highway. It's more confident inspiring. The wheelbase are 10 centimeters longer than Volvo's EX30. And you really feel that when you're driving in good speeds on highway, it's much more planted, much more stable. It's not so nervous as the EX30 could be in high speed. So overall, I'm actually a huge fan, but the infotainment, that is definitely the worst part. And this lazy ass fox that can't do anything. So I'm just using a uh, wireless Android Auto. But you can't listen to music on the Android Auto because the connection are really bad, so it, it keeps uh, bugging uh, and di disconnecting. So it, the music can't play one even one song even. So, yeah, but overall, this was my first impressions, my good, bad, my good and bad with Smart Hashtag One. But overall, it's actually a pretty awesome car. If they just put in the infotainment that Volvo has. Ah, oh, I can't get it all. So now, I think I'm out of the smart hashtag one. And now I'm really excited for the Seeker X. Maybe that is just the sweet spot in this three clover. Because I don't think the smart hashtag one are for me. So with that, it's time to end this video. And now up and meet Chris and make a comparison video. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.